Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, European Crossover Webinar. And we are seeing the uh, dollar, um, and let me just ratchet my volume here. Hold on. Okay, so we're uh, seeing the uh, dollar going in, continue to slide a little bit here, but not anything dramatic, although I do expect the dollar to continue to pair back. Uh, we saw the euro dollar run into the uh, 1262 area here. We'll take a look at that quickly. We had that as our bias chart resistance. Um, obviously a big, big level here, the 1262, but we're starting to move above that. And as I mentioned yesterday, um, today's a huge day for, for Fed speak, uh, potential Fed tape bombs, but I don't really expect to be as much Fed tape bombs as I think that it's going to be everybody singing from the, uh, or most of them singing from the same choir book, um, talking about the, the cuts. So it's, it's interesting how things swing. We're looking for those that talk. And then up until yesterday, everybody was saying it won't happen. It won't happen. Now all of a sudden, you know, that solidified the 25 basis point cut. And now they're looking for, three 25 basis point cuts by the end of the year. Now that's being priced in. You know, that being said, the, the euro is still re, uh, restrained, I should say, as to how, where it's come up. One of the things we talked about yesterday when we were talking about 1262, we said, um, let's go on and uh, push this right here. We said this, the real resistance actually comes in right there, 1285. That's where the real resistance, I mean, if, you know, 1262 is big, and it was, and it was huge to lose, and the market was having a tough time pressing against this yesterday, and it kept sliding back. Um, but this is where things change around, if they can get a close above 1285. And, and you know, it's interesting, to, as I said, when I said, you know, the dollars slide back, but not a whole lot, because you would have thought, Wow, well, 25 basis points to solidify, you know, this month. And, you know, now the market, whether you agree or not, is pricing in uh, three 25 basis point cuts uh, by end of year. You'd have thought this thing was at least challenging 13, if not higher. We're not even, you know, up at 1285. We haven't even taken that out. Although I think that will come to fruition as we get through today. Obviously, we have um, CPI we've got to get, get by also. But let's take a look with the cash dollar index. So we've slid past and lost this 97.02, but nothing dramatic yet. I mean, here's where we're going to see some resistance or support come in 73 right there. It's going in. we go that's what we have support but like i said once we get the fed speaks um we can we can push through this level here but um, let's go back here and boy have we slid quite a bit look at this on the uh, dollar yen boy we've really given up the ghost here um and let's take a look at the uh, data that'll be out we're down that's already come out. She had uh, French CPI and, um, but as we come into um, the States, we're gonna be looking at core CPI. That's really gonna help solidify dollar move here. If we've seen what they refer to that lack of, you know, inflation. Do you have uh, initial jobless claims, uh, new housing price index for Canadian data, Cleveland Fed, CPI. So obviously the big driver today will be, here in the States will be the CPI. And let's take it to news.
Europe French tax, uh, French tax as to the global trade tensions. A new battle may be starting in the multi-fronted global trade war with Donald Trump ordering an investigation into France's planned digital service tax, tax on tech companies. A levy Washington suspects could unfairly target companies. You know, this is one that I'm going to have to agree with on. I really do. Uh, remember, this, all this business with the, the Google and Facebook, this started probably about – I think it was about five or six years ago, and I was really ticked off. I remember at the time, and the reason was because to me it just seemed like it was just a, a for me it was just a, a way for Europe just to generate some income. I remember I remember this coming out. I think it must have been about five or six years ago, probably six years ago, when they just started. Oh, okay, well you're doing good, so we're going to start we're going to start finding ways to tax you. So I have to, you know, this is one time, one of the times in once in a blue, 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 blue moon that I will be in full, complete accord with Donald Trump on this one. Uh, you know, I remember at the time going on rants, you know, hey, you know, you can't, you can't uh, um, develop anything. So you're just going to find ways to tax, tax uh, the U.S. to go on and get the, get your money. And I remember this happened, like I said, about six years ago. But anyway, the 3% tax on the French uh, revenue of large internet groups could yield 500 million euros. Yeah, just, you know, if you can't, if you can't generate your own, own a revenue, just go and get it from somebody else. The 3% tax on the French revenue of large internet groups could yield 500 million euros and would target around 30 companies, mostly U.S. firms such as Google, Amazon, and Facebook, but also some Chinese and European ones. Yeah, okay, you're yeah, right, if you say so. Today, the French upper house is due to vote on it. Any U.S. probe could take up to a year. If the conclusion is that U.S. companies are being unfairly targeted, expect new tariffs or other trade penalties. Uh, trade penalties. German Chancellor Angela Merkel's meeting with Denmark's new Social Democratic PM met Fredriksen. I don't care about politics. Um, let's see. Germany's uh, German annual inflation accelerated to 1.5% in June, yet remained below the European Central Bank's target. Final data from the Federal Statistics Office showed this morning. Later, the ECB is due to publish minutes of its June policy meeting, which, together with Mario Draghi's unexpectedly dovish remarks at the ECB's annual way uh, day in Sintra on, uh, Sintra on June 18th, will set the tone for the bank's next meeting in two weeks' time. Powell has fired up the half-pointers once again. Although the Fed chair's uh, congressional testimony merely underlined the Fed's case for easing policy to ensure against the economic effect of a trade war and sub to target inflation, it was enough to get the futures markets back pricing in a one in four chance of uh, 50 basis points cut later this month. On Tuesday, only a quarter point was priced and no more. Shift back to thinking in terms of a 50 basis point buoyed stock and bond markets once again, even though minutes of the Fed latest policy minutes were far from cautious and late St. Louis Fed Chair Bullard restated his belief that the 50 basis point would be too much at this point. And I mean, I'm of the ilk for the, uh, for the cut, but I think they don't need 50 basis points this month. I mean, 25 is just fine. The release of the U.S. consumer price inflation numbers later today will also give markets pause for thought as the Fed will want to see consistent data cover for the a decision to start easing policy once again. And rising oil prices where Brent crude has topped $67 for the first time since May may have also cool, cooled the easing mood a touch. Nevertheless, uh, Wall Street hit record fresh highs on Wednesday. The S&P 500 briefly topped at 3,000 for the time being. Ten-year Treasury yields settled back below 2.05% for the first thing today. Um, and if Powell puts trade wars at the center of his concern for the economy, there's plenty of fresh ways to keep him anxious. Even though uh, telephone trade talks between Washington and Beijing have reportedly resumed, U.S. pressure on Europe has gone up a notch. Trump on Wednesday ordered an investigation in France's planned tax on technology companies, a probe that could lead to the United States imposing new tariffs or other trade restrictions. The move gives trade representative Robert Lissinger up to a year to investigate if France's digital tax plan would hurt U.S. technology companies. Um, let's see, so let's go move into the dollar. The dollar slips after Powell bolsters ra uh, rate cut bets, and Bitcoin sinks. The dollar eased on Thursday afternoon after Federal Reserve. <clears throat> 
On Thursday, I didn't say afternoon, I meant, didn't mean to say afternoon, but after Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell set the stage for a rate cut later this month, vowing to act as appropriate to ensure the world's biggest economy will be able to sustain a decade-long expansion. In testimony, Congress uh, Powell pointed to broad global weakness that was clouding the U.S. economic outlook and uncertainty about the fallout from Trump administration's trade conflict with China and other nations. Chairman Powell sounded dovish on most dimensions. This is slightly surprising given benign trade developments between last month's G20 and recent rebound in non-farm payroll, said uh, Michael Swill. Overall, his comments around slowing against the backdrop of muted inflation and elevated uncertainties is Consistent with insurance rate cuts this year, adding to a generally dovish tone is his testimony. The minutes from the Fed's policy meeting showed policymakers thought more stimulus would be needed soon. Dow's index against six major countries set two tenths to 96.87. A rate cut in July completely sealed now, but on the other hand, Powell dropped the little hint of what he would do after that, although he sounded quite optimistic on the economy. And um, and also referring, in contrast, the Canadian dollar moved closer to last week's eight-month high as the Bank of Canada showed no sign that would match potential interest rate cuts from the Fed, making it clear it had no intention of easing monetary policy. So with that, we'll get into the bias chart. Looks odd to be looking at the euro going up after it's been just a relentless pursuit of the downside. Well, twelve eighty five is huge to get things um, with you know an actual upside momentum. This is just an oversold little bounce. We need to get above twelve eighty five to generate to generate. Uh, inkling of this upside momentum. We actually uh, ran into some trouble here at the 38%. Um, looking here, the resistance, if we stretch out a little bit, comes in right there at 1307. See that right there? Support on the downside. I mean, this is some decent support. Obviously, 1247 is key, but um, I don't know that we'd make it that low. Let's just go with Yeah, let's go into cable. So we'll get a little bit of a bounce. We talked about this yesterday. Is that it's oversold, and if the dollar did start to slide, we might start. To, we may see the the cable come back a little bit. That's exactly what it's doing now. I mean, but of not any, but not of any great relevance. Let me put it that way. I mean, it's just if the dollar's going to slide back, the cable could, you know bounce up a little bit yeah to be expected but once again as i said nothing of any great relevance um we haven't even quite even made here to this bias chart resistance but we're actually going to move it a little bit high higher i should say so we'll just put it right there 1262 i don't know why i said 1262 but i mean 2562 
I don't think this has more to do with the domino deck sliding back than really any kind of real significant balance here with cable. As far as support, Go right there, twenty four ninety seven. Let's move into the Aussie dollar. I remember we had 69.25. Um, we actually made it all the way down here to 69.10. So boy, did they take a pretty good little dip here with the Aussie. Let's go move into the two-hour chart so you can see a little bit closer look at where we would go to. Right there at 70 cents. Support comes in right there at 69. Remember we had the 69.44 and we mentioned at the beginning of the weekend, potential move down to 69 and a quarter. Boy, they went right quick through that all the way down to 10. Um, they'll be right there at 69.39. We're making a bit of a charge here for a moment. Well, we've got a pretty good little run here. Hang on. Well, that's a solid little run. Hang on. Let's go right there. 66.79. It's about 10 pips away.
And support's going to be 66.29. Well, Bank of Canada wasn't, I guess maybe some people thought they would be very dovish. Um, and we came back here to challenge this 31-36, although we, we had run right back into that same zone here, if you want to call it a zone, on the two-hour chart, which you can see that that's at 31-41 here. And we quickly gave that back. Um, I don't think that the Bank of Canada was necessarily hawkish in any respect whatsoever, but they certainly weren't dovish the way, um, you know, PAL, uh, you know, in comparison. And certainly we've pushed down here, back down here to the lower end. Uh, resistance, obviously we had this at this 3041. Um, we'll just go right here with 3098. Well, we have the potential to break lower, and we may do just that. We, you know, we had that 30.43 here. So we're looking potentially for a move down here all the way down to 29.96. Which is twenty nine ninety five, but twenty nine ninety five. It's still quite a ways off, but once again, it, with the Fed speak and all that, we have the potential to go back here and break through here. So we're going to go twenty nine ninety five. And let's go with the peso. Well, once again, we still can't get past this 1923.6. We have some, you know, a couple of dalliances above it, but we just can't seem to do it here on a daily or even come close to it. Look at that. Um, so that's going to continue to remain the key resistance, 1923.6. And that's say I don't know why that that is not from the. It's kind of frustrating that this this. Um, um, Excel does not save some of these. We look at that. Look how low that was, and the high was 1910 after we've already been up here. So I don't know why it saved that from, you know, was it three days ago? If I had to restart my computer for one of these stupid um, Microsoft updates. Um, let's go and take a look here on for support.
after those runs there, we're going to move this down here to 1905 with the potential to slide down here. So we'll look at 1905. With that, let's go to the dolly. And boy, have we seen a big reaction here. They had the opportunity to make it up here, this 927, if power was, you know, we had 908 on a very, very short-term basis, but it was 927 that we thought, this is where the market can get to to challenge it. When power came out dovish, boy, did they, uh, you know, hit the trap door, and boy, did we slide back. Uh, support's going to be right there at 778, although we've already bounced a little bit off this, but 778. With resistance, let's go into the two hour chart. It'd be eight thirty two. Come up there, eight thirty two. Take a look here at the cash dollar index. Support's going to come in right there at 96.62. Immediate support, not that we can't push a little bit lower, but 96.62. And we'll go with 97.21 for the resistance. And with that, we'll move into the cross rates. So after coming down here, this Kiwi Yen's trying to find a little bit higher move. Let's take a look at the two hour chart. Sports going to come in right there. Seventy one eighty two.
What's the resistance up here at Now let's go and move into the Euro Yen. Interesting, as in almost no movement per se. So we'll come, support comes in right there, 2165. With resistance. Twenty two eleven. We'll call twenty two actually twenty two ten. After this big run up here, things have quieted down quite a bit. Look how tight that range is now. Obviously, 62 cents is what's going to be on the upside. And the downside, move that just a bit lower, which is 61.44, which doesn't offer much. It's going to be actually right there. 61.32, 61.32 and 62 cents. And onto the Euro Kiwi. Same thing, just a nice little pair back, but just one moment. Same thing, also run up to the 50%. Boy, is this dripped and dripped and dripped. Um, Sixty-nine forty-seven, and then um, sixty-six eighty-one. Uh, DK was saying about the um, the resistance levels uh, are better, but we had these big swings um, in on the way down. And look at this big this big whipping around here. So you can see here where we just shot up like a rocket. You know I mean, who would have thought this thing would have shot up this fast that quickly? And now look, we turn around and fall right back to get dead. So you couldn't you couldn't offer this thing on the way up. 
Now you can't bid. I mean, now this thing can't hold a bid on the way down. So yeah, we'll be seeing a bit of extremes, but uh, thanks, DK. Um, let's go on and move into the RCN. And the same thing, we saw that with the Euro RC2. You know, it's interesting because the moves here in the cross rates versus the yen are a lot more restrained, well, obviously for good reason, compared to what you saw here in the dolly and where the trap door was pulled out. Um, looking here with the Aussie yen, We're probably not going to hit this for today, but I still think this is a good one right there. That's 75.74. And we came right here into the the support. We're just going to hold it where it was right there. So no changes here in the LCN. No changes. Now, I don't think we're going to get to this today, but we're going to keep that there. That's where the real resistance will come in on a very short-term basis. You see, and this is saving it from the other day. Well, because I know, look, look, we had this here. I don't know why it has that, because it's it was 7521, so I'm not sure why. Got saved like that. It's frustrating. Um, as I said, I had a um, Microsoft update, and I don't think I had that for yesterday's low. I know that the, the, the Pesa wasn't anywhere close. Had an 1892 to 1910, which is crazy, considering where that was a day after the big move. Um, Let's go into the guppy. Boy, this thing continues to just stay weak. Boy, this to me epitomizes that commercial with the old lady. I've fallen and I can't get up. Holy smokes. I, honestly, I'm surprised it hasn't even come down here to tag that 78%. Um, let's go into the um, two-hour chart. I know that Sterling is kind of holding its own a bit. Um, you know, well, but then again, that's against, against the dollar where we've seen a little bit of a move up higher. Um, well, support's going to be right there. It's not saying a whole lot, but it'd be 35.19. And on the upside, if we can get a bit of a pop here, B thirty five eighty seven. I mean, this is actually if you're very thin selling, it's thirty five sixty five. But um, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt and go with thirty five once again. Thirty five eighty. We'll call thirty five eighty six. And stirring odd. We're just trapped down here. Uh, with the stirring weakness, it's some, it's uh something to behold with the exception of uh, against a dollar obviously seeing a little bit of a strength we just look how tight this range is you would think that these were 15 minute charts 15 minute bars and these are two hour bars so we're trading basically a 20 pip trading range for quite some time support and, and there's potential to definitely the potential to break lower 
And if we do get that, it's going to be 79.25. With the upside being... I'm not sure if we can even make it up there. They may have to be realistic. Um, on the very, very short term, 8006, so 79.25 and 8006. And there's the bias chart for today. I'll go and get that posted into the room. Um, as I mentioned, um, we do have CPI data and we have a plethora of uh, Fed speakers talking today. So I think that will give the dollar the momentum to break lower. As, and don't forget, late in the day, late in the US afternoon, very, very late, we have Kashkari speaking. And if someone's gonna be able to kick the dollar down the stairs, it certainly would be Kashkari. So uh, thanks for joining us here on the uh, European Crossover Webinar.